What's going on everybody? Wings Workshop here. I've got another video. What year is it? I know, I know, I know. I've been slacking hard on the YouTube content, but give me a break. I've been busy, you know, releasing smoke machines and thrusters and all of that stuff. And also soon to more products. So, been busy all around and haven't been sitting still. But hey, for now, I'm back with a video and we are gonna vapor smooth some PLA prints with acetone. Yes, I know, PLA vapor smoothing with acetone. I know, I know, blah, blah, blah. You can't smooth PLA prints with acetone. I used to say the same thing. But then I started to do some experimenting and failing hard and, and experimenting some more. And it led me to a lot of awesome results, which I'm gonna share with you in this video. Now, why do I wanna smooth PLA prints? Well, first off, I really, really hate sanding. Uh, I used to print with ABS and that's quite easy to vapor smooth and also quite easy to sand, but printing ABS is rather difficult. You need a, a heated enclosure, it can still fail a lot, so I just wanted to go back to easy PLA printing and somehow still have that benefit of vapor smoothing those PLA prints. Since I used 3D printing primarily for cosplay purposes, uh, the end result of having it smooth uh, matters greatly to me because, you know, we're going to paint all of these things and, you know, you will really want a smooth surface instead of all those gnarly print lines. Now I tested this method on uh, various PLAs uh, that was available to me here in Europe. Uh, because PLA varies a lot, I, I wanted to uh, get six different brands and uh, also variations of PLA to see uh, which one worked and which one didn't work. I have Amazon Basics in yellow because I wanted one brand that's available here in Europe but also is available to my American friends. I got some eSun PLA Plus in green because I wanted to see what PLA Plus, uh, how that reacts to this method. A cheap PLA. Uh, purple from Hobby King. Uh, the roll has been already depleted because I used some uh, just a tiny amount from a friend of mine. Devil Design PLA in beige. Uh, Devil Design is a Polish brand and I can buy them here locally at a store called uh, Tiny Tronics. It's a Dutch vendor. I wanted to add one of those uh, metallic or metal filled PLAs as well. You see like the aluminum ones or the bronze. This is Gitech. Uh, copper filled PLA to see how that responds. And last but not least, I have Ultimaker white PLA, and this was the only print that has not been printed here, but at the Ultimaker 2 uh, at, that we have at my job. So for this test and, and for this video, I'm using these small Daruma prints because, well, they're small, it's easy to capture on video, they're quite round, they have some detail in the front, so makes for a, a, a good test model. And because it's round, it has some gnarly stepping on the top here, and we'll, um, we'll show you that later what I got planned for that. I've used the same G-code for, for this model for all the filaments I have, and all of them were printed at 0.12 layer height. So what else do we need? need for this aside from uh, PLA printed parts? Well, we need a large pot. We don't really need a large pot, but since I'm doing this for cosplay purposes, uh, big props go in here, so I need a large pot. You can use a smaller one if you only print small things, of course, So, but for now we have a large metallic, uh, we have a stainless steel pot, and we have an induction heater. It's not a gas heater, it's not an electric heater, it's an induction heater. So why induction? Because there's no open flame and there's no glowing hot objects. It won't work without the stainless steel pot sitting on top of it. It will just beep and it will not work. And there's no, like I said, no open fires, no flames. And since we're gonna be using acetone, acetone is highly flammable. So you don't want any open flames, uh, glowing hot objects. Uh, just use an induction we're also gonna need some safety gear, like gloves, respirators, like this one, or this one. Not this one, this will not protect you. If you're unsure, these ones are rated for organic fume. And if you can manage, have some sort of air exhaust system, uh, inner shop can be a fan just blowing out the window. I have an air exhaust system behind the camera and that leads with a tube outside the window. So how does this work? 
Now of course it's not a matter of chucking everything in the pan and calling it a day, there's some work to be done. First we fill the pot up with a good layer of acetone. I have this aluminum block laying around which provides a nice base for my model to sit on. You can use something similar like one, two, three blocks or maybe an old heatsink from a fan. Uh, just don't use any plastic stuff as it will simply melt either to the high heat we're going to use acetone or even the combination of both. So first up is the Amazon Basics Yellow PLA. I set the induction here to high, wait it for acetone to boil and you can see the vapor rising on the side here. And once that is over the halfway point of the pot, I set the heating to low. This to prevent all the vapor spilling over the edge of the pot due to too much vapor uh, collecting inside of this stainless steel pot. Acetone vapor is heavy and will stay in the pot if the heating is correctly tuned or low like this. I then set a timer to two minutes and let it do its thing. When the time was up, the induction heater shuts down and I used two grips to lift the whole thing out and let the piece harden out. This hardening out goes pretty fast as the exposure to the acetone was intense but short. So what remains on the print evaporates pretty quickly as well. I let it sit for 30 minutes just to be sure it was safe to touch without leaving my fingerprints on it. As you can see, it's a pretty glossy shine after just those two minutes with a lot of the layer lines smooth. Here I'm performing a fingernail test on an unsmoothed one. And here on the Amazon Basics smoothed one. I did the same treatment for all the other prints under the same conditions. I'm time lapsing and grouping these together for this video to save some time and not making this video any longer than needed. Alrighty, Amazon Basics PLA Yellow. Responded great, great shine to it, a lot of the lines are gone and if you want to clear more of it you can repeat the process over and over but don't go leaving it in for 10 minutes straight as it will just turn the entire thing into goop. You want to affect the outside walls only, so short stint in the pot, take it out, harden back out, and then you can repeat it again. But Amazon Basic responds very well. Esun PLA Plus in green, totally not shiny at all. It turned murky and, and spotty. The lines are less and, and it is somewhat more smooth, but not as great as the Amazon Basics. Hobby King PLA in purple. Seems to suffer the same as Esun. Spots between the layers, a, a more matte shine to it. But when doing the fingernail test, it does prove to be smoothed out about the same as the Esun PLA Plus. Perhaps Hobby King PLA is comparable to PLA Plus, I'm not sure. Devil Design PLA in beige. Great shine here, super smooth, I think this one has the best results out of the bunch. Print failed a bit at the bottom when printing, but that's of no real concern here for this test. Uh, fingernail test proves to be very smooth. Compared to the Amazon Basics, they really uh, come close together. Gitech copper filled PLA. This one didn't work at all. You can clearly see the start stop line here. Uh, the fingernail test still felt a, a good amount of layers, spots everywhere. And honestly, you wouldn't probably do this method on a metallic filled PLA anyway, as you already like the way it looks. You want that copper or bronze or gold finish uh, and, and probably just don't po post process it after uh, your print. But I did want to include it in this uh, acetone test. Ultimaker PLA White. This one uh, got it bad, uh, as the print settings on the Ultimaker at work are kind of, well, shit. Thin walls, low percentage of infill leads to this groovy pattern uh, from, from the heat inside. Uh, but when looking at the walls itself, nice and shiny again. It feels really smooth. It's about the same as Devil Design. Uh, and Amazon Basics. And I, and I really didn't expect that with the uh, Ultimaker PLA. 
Moving on, I wanted to see how it responded to some old-fashioned filling and sanding. If, if it's not for cosplay purposes, you can just leave it at that and have like a nice shine to it or less layers. But since this is also for cosplay purposes, you know, you want to fill it, sand it, paint it and all of that stuff. So I hit it with three thin layers of spray putty to fill in some remaining gaps there might be. I noticed that the PLA got much softer after the acetone heat treatment, even when days have gone by. This makes it in turn much easier to sand. Here is the same devil design print with, some, with that pretty gnarly stepping on the top. It's been acetone smoothed slash treated and sprayed with spray putty and now with just 30 seconds of light sanding with 180 grit sandpaper I'm not even pressing the piece hard against the machine just lightly going in circles and it's gone for better illustration I hit it with one layer of that spray putty again and and that's pretty smooth for just that little amount of time put into it I have here this uh, Daruma print and it's in the same devil design but in gray this is fresh off the printer and it's not been treated, so let's sand this for 30 seconds, that stepping, and compare it to the one we just saw. So here you see that same heavy stepping on top, and now let's sand this for 30 seconds. I'm time-lapsing this shot again, but you can see the stopwatch for 30 seconds of sanding. And that's that. While I was at it, I sanded the Esun PLA Plus Green and Hobby King Purple PLA as well, just for more comparison material. While they smoothed somewhat less than the rest, it did smooth some. Top it off with some filler again so we can compare them better. Right, so I have here that gray uh, Devil Design PLA print untreated and only sanded for 30 seconds. You can see all the layer lines up top here, the heavy stepping while of course sanded down some. You can still see a lot of that here and just those rings here and... Uh, the the spray putty filler didn't do much at all uh, it's all just a lot of stepping still so compared that to the same brand of devil design the beige one and this was as we just saw been treated and also sanded for 30 seconds all smooth hair just a little bit still up top but with an additional 30 seconds of sanding that's probably all gone nice and smooth all around some hair hair and dirt but yeah pretty smooth if we go to the Amazon basics one that also responded very well nice and smooth hair didn't even sand it here it's only been up top here you can see some little bit of dense here but I don't think these could be sanded away anyway because they're dense so maybe some more filler or putty or whatever but still nice smooth uh, walls all around now if we look at the ones that didn't respond all that great this is the Esun uh, PLA in green uh, it did respond in some place, as you can see, we can see some spots here, but the heavy stepping is kind of gone. Here it's smooth, but here it's not. Uh, this seems to be some dirt that got caught when I was priming, so kind of ignore that. But like here, it's not smooth, and here it, it kind of is. So results vary on the uh, PLA Plus from Eson. Here is the Hobby King Purple. Uh, really tough and hard, so I guess Hobby King didn't soften up as much as, as the rest. Uh, you can see some, uh, still some stepping here. Here it seems to have responded better, but still uh, a pretty varying result for the uh, Hobby King. And now to finish up with the uh, Ultimaker one, this has been, uh, here you can see the result of no sanding, but this one has been treated uh, three times, so triple treated. I did the full method of going in for two minutes, taking it out, hardening it out, uh, and then once it's hardened out, put it back in, and vice versa, three times, and you can see that is, like, there's no layer lines whatsoever. 
still it has that like groovy uh, weird denty finish because print settings at work on the Ultimaker are just really bad so it's just thin walls so the heat really reacted to it but if you look at the surface quality itself it responded really great to um, to repeated treatments so in conclusion PLA acetone vapor smoothing does work but you do need some extra gear to make it work and it depends on what brand you use as we just saw uh, some brands work really well and while other brands well they don't really work at all and some do work but have varying results if you want a prime example of this method on a finished piece then this is the peacekeeper shotgun from apex legends that i made as a birthday gift for my buddy sven it's all printed in separate parts and all parts are multiple times treated in this method and was done all relatively quick I will say some sanding went in it, but only on parts with heavy stepping. And all in all, I think a total of only 20 to 30 minutes of sanding went into this entire piece. Now, will this work on the PLA brand that you get? Well, there's no way for me to know because I can't test it on every PLA brand that the world provides. But I hope the testing of these six brands gave you enough insights. I'm going to apply this method to this Giver 3 face mask here and then proceeded to paint it up and install my cosplay thruster system in there all in a future video. Be sure to hit that sub button and the bell button so you don't miss it. Speaking of subbing, at the time of recording this we are nearing the 10k mark on this channel. So maybe I should do something like maybe uh, ask me anything live or something. Tell me what you think about it down in the comments below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.